So I was looking at a scientific paper and it had a reference to a book from 1885 about acne. It's called Acne, It's Etology, Pathology, and Treatment. And it's written by a physician who lived in New York City in 1885. Charming things about this book is that there's uh, illustrations of what acne glands look like. So here, the author talks about uh, how frequent acne is. But statistics fail to exhibit in any measure the real frequency of acne for reasons which have already hinted at in the preceding chapter. The eruptions here studied are so regarded as a necessary accompaniment of adolescence and are so often looked upon as a deformity rather than a disease that but a small proportion of those who have had acne apply for treatment, especially among the poorer classes. The lesions also often appear and disappear under various dietetic and other conditions and so frequently persist but a short time that medical relief is sought in really but a very small proportion of all the cases which occur. To this may be added as a reason the popular distrust of the efficacy of treatment in this complaint, which is unfortunately too often founded upon unsuccessful attempts at medication with advertised nostrums or home remedies. Talking about how people attribute acne to being a cause of age, you know, when, when somebody reaches puberty, they get acne. But he's saying that's not necessarily the case. He says, but puberty and the development of the hairs and the sebaceous glands are natural processes or conditions. It should not be followed by untoward symptoms under circumstances of perfect health. And this indeed is what is observed, namely that when the health is perfect and the functions are normally performed, puberty passes without the occurrence of acne, or if single glands become inflamed, they rapidly subside and the disturbance is very transitory. Heredity has sometimes been claimed to be a factor in the causation of acne, but there does not seem to be much evidence that this element can be recorded as of very great importance. It was quite exceptional to have more than one member of a family under treatment for acne. Here he describes that acne can come and go depending on circumstances. He writes, many cases of acne in various forms are seen constantly to vary with the general condition and the tone of health and yield readily to any measures which restore vitality to the system. Thus, it is not uncommonly happens that the eruption quite disappears under change of scene and relaxation from care as during a summer vacation in the country. It returns again when the patient exhibits fatigue. And here he talks about how acne is linked to, quote, digestive disorders. Prominent among the clinical features which are presented by patients with the various forms of sebaceous disorder are imperfect digestion and excretion. And a little care will demonstrate that these elements in a very considerable proportion of the cases Although many individuals will assert at first that they are in perfect health, being solicitous solely for the immediate removal of their annoying or disfiguring eruption, careful investigation will frequently demonstrate that that such is not the case, and they will constantly acknowledge that the eruption is worse as they suffer from one or another of these departures from health. And then in the progress of the case, the relation between the two may be repeatedly observed. The frequently occurring disorder is that of constipation or faulty bowel ex <laughs> excretion and evacuation. And then he describes how many ac acne patients have disturbed sleep. Among the clinical features which a little care will discover in many patients with acne may be mentioned a greater or less departure from the normal character of the sleep. When first asked in regard to sleep, Patients will often answer that is good and frequently add too good. By this latter expression, it is meant that there is more or less drowsiness at times, a very heavy and unnatural sleep, and great indisposition to rise in the morning. When further questioned, it will frequently be found that they have many deviations from normal sound and refreshing sleep. Patients will find it hard to go to sleep, will wake up in the night and remain awake, will be harassed by distressing or annoying dreams, or will awake unrefreshed and tired. Upon proper treatment directed to the cure of the, the acne, the observation will be continually made 
that these troublesome features disappear and the sleep has become natural and life-restoring.